Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of the round three group P match between Alan76 and Dion Lord. Um, a necromantic mirror, Alan76 has won the toss, elected to receive. Um, as you can see their paint styles are very similar, so we're going to switch to red and blue to make it clear who's who. But shame on Dion Lord for not customising his team in any way, shape or form. We can have a look at the group here. And we can see that both Dion Lord and Alan76 are both on three points. And um, they've both scored one touchdown. But because Alan76 has conceded two, Dion Lord has the tie break. So a draw or a win for Dion Lord will see him qualify for the knockout stage. And Alan76 requires a win. And I can tell you about these players that Dion Lord is Italian and qualified through the DHM League Rookie Magello 3 and Alan76 is from the UK and qualified through the Murder Bowl League um, Gateway to Glory and he is a PlayStation Pro so that's, uh, that's great news for Calcium and all of the other PlayStation uh, coaches in existence which are, you know about five or six. The funny thing is, of course, the, every, all the qualifiers, or nearly every qualifier, I think probably all the qualifiers will be cross-platform next season, so there, will, there won't be that divide. There were like an X amount of PlayStation qualifiers for this t this year, but next year it will all be cross-platform. Very good. Very good for the, you know, the console coaches, right, having that. We might have some Xbox hidden legends come to the fore next uh Next world championship. <laughs> wow, Dimmy. Dimmy the bad man. Don't be mean, please. Alan! Alan! <laughs> wow, Yudi. I mean, honestly, that's that's despicable attitude. Neither of them. No, no. Wait, these are custom cheerleaders, I think. Yeah, these are the undead cheerleaders, right? Undead cheerleaders. Basic ones for Dion Lord. And uh, also, Alan's got the proper coach. Um, I forgot about the teams because, of course, we looked at the teams on stream before. There's three guard for Alan. There is a block and a wrestle ghoul, and there's a strip ball white. Um, for Dion Lord, he's also got three guard, and he's got mighty blow white, which I think is just a little bit better than strip ball. And he's also got... A, he hasn't got a block and a wrestle. He's got a block and a sure hands, which count as the wrestle. Um, oh, wait a minute. There is also only two ghouls for Alan. Did he use a reroll this turn? Yeah. Got to blow it down so he used the reroll. So he had an extra reroll. He gave up two ghouls for a reroll. I do not like doing that. But, you know. Makes the one in nine that you roll not so bad. Um, <laughs> he can't. I thought he could just instantly be hit by a mummy, but he can't. <laughs> that would have been wild. It just instantly smashed by a mummy. <laughs> But yeah, I think I think the skills favour Dion Lord. I also think Dion Lord's been a um, been a high-ranked tabletop player before, and you know he's got four goals. So Dion Lord not only needs a draw to qualify, I think he's probably favoured in this game, and he's made an instant removal with failed regen because somebody had a Skellington on their team, and it was the eight that you rolled on the armour, so there you go, if you want any proof about how you shouldn't take skeletons, there's your proof, 810. So yeah, 
skeleton's bad, everybody. Just so you know. Just so you know. <laughs> Team's all drunk. <laughs> Why didn't the skeleton go to the party? Go on, Dimmy. Because he had no body to go with. Did you get that from uh, Alien Romulus? <laughs> oh, he's got a second skeleton as well. Oh, he's replaced the he's replaced the ghouls with skeletons. He's got three skeletons for a bit of speed because he's lost two ghouls. Oh dear, I don't like that. I feel like you have to have four ghouls. Ghouls are incredible players, and I don't like skeletons. I think they're worse than zombies. So yeah. Yeah, the uh, the high the hybrid one. I hate. I hated the stupid hybrid. Yuck. The pro I, I would have blitzed this guy with a wrestler. Right? It looks like he wants to blitz here. So, oh god, he's handing off. Oh wow, okay, this is it. Balls to the wall here from Alan. He's got his strip ball into range. The double rush next turn, because he has to win, right? So, this is one of the situations where you play, you know, suboptimally, because you need the win. Which is what I was terrified of in my round three match, which is why I elected to go on defense first, so that I'd know where I stood for offense. Because of course, if Alan had started on defense, maybe he stops the Lord's drive, right? Maybe he turns him over. If he's one nil up at this point, then he, you know, he knows exactly what he has to do on offense. He knows what he has to do if he's one nil down or nil nil or one nil up. They're the three most likely results, of course. Then he knows exactly what he has to do in the second half. Whereas now, going in the dark, by you know, if he does score early to try to turn over to get the win, he might you know he might score early, get scored on, and then stop the drive in the second half. It's like well, he could have got the win if he just picked defense first. So I think defense first was the way. Wow. Yeah, so that, that was literally it. It was just with the specific, the specific angle of having to win. Was the thing. It's so like let's say normal game. I'd be like thirty, forty, thirty for me to win. Um, I felt I had to like you know do everything I could do to push that to like something like thirty-five to win to sixty-five to lose, right? Because anything I can get to give me percentage points to win. Even if it's like the worst decision overall, a any extra percent you can get to win is good, isn't it? Hello, <laughs> okay, fuck yeah, yeah. I, I think specifically when you have to win, it becomes a bit different. Which is funny, isn't it? Because obviously in a tabletop tournament, you have to win every round. So, I like a normal tabletop tournament, not obviously team tournaments or. Uh, Whatever, but generally you have to win every single game in a tabletop tournament to win. But I guess the thing is on tabletop, so does your opponent, right? Your opponent also has to win. So you can just receive score on turn 8, and now they'll have to score early and lose, right? <laughs> so I guess that's the difference. Whereas my opponent only needed a draw, so I had to kick and see what was happening. That's what I felt anyway. 
So, I mean, this is a very easy just 2D for a push and then run through, right? Oh, except then he'll, that'll be taking the space. So maybe just 1Ds with Wrestle. One D's this, it doesn't matter which one. Oh yeah, yeah no. So you you base this and then you one D with wrestle. So on a both down, you've got the walkthrough. Yeah, that's what you do. Lineman there. This guy one D wrestles, and then run through score. Yes, Santa. Yeah, technically not. Almost certainly you have to. Like, funny enough, the, the, the NAF style qualifier for the World Championship that Davo won, he won it with five wins, one draw, and no losses. Um, so, yeah. And that is true. And I was second with five wins and one loss. Wow, I'm surprised he didn't score. Because, you know, he set up in range. So I felt like 3-2 pluses to score. Oh, wow. But why score when you just Kazagul? There we go. That's pretty good, isn't it? And you can have a full cage if he makes this dodge off. Ah, so that's, that's a much better Kaz than this zombie. Oh, well. When, oh, God. <laughs> I don't endorse this at all. Yeah, very unlucky the uh, ghoul does not regen there. I think he absolutely had to stay in the cage. Yeah, it sucks if he fails the dodge, but... This is just worse, I think. Yeah, size of the tournament, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Very good point, Dimmy, yeah. That hidden 10% bonus. This is strangely at a kind of a decent spot. I mean, I think he's in a lot more of a decent spot if this player's one behind and this player is one over. But, you know, because now there's options to maybe get 2D on the ball. But it's not easy. It takes ghoul dodges and stuff. So he might just go for, like, you know, basing him from behind and trying to sandwich him a bit or whatever. Who knows? These three can't really do anything. This guy's tagged. So all of this mess is tagged out. So he's got like five on five up here. I mean, it could just be a white dodger. Yeah. But I mean, that can fail, right? Like it's one in nine to just, like it's such a horrible failure state. So I, I'd be thinking of, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, maybe block him, put the assist in, and then like run all the way around. Like it's hard, like it's hard to do without dodges. That's what I was saying, trying to say. It's hard to do without dodges. So seeing as you're gonna dodge, it's just like, you know, if you, if you fail this dodge, you're so exposed, aren't you? And he just does the 1D pal. So then this gives him a hit from here with the assist, yeah. But now he's got no ghouls to, to, for recovery. But he jams it in between the his ghouls and the mummy, which is quite good, isn't it? So yeah, I, I quite like his solution, actually. But it did take two rushes. And he gets it in the tackle zone of the mummy. Really nice. 
but yeah, I think he just had to had you know had to had to risk the the cool dodge, um, Alan, to have it in like have it in a full cage. One of those things where like you know he did the kind of the safer thing, to have. He minimised the failure state of the ghoul dodge, but he didn't maximise the success state, did he? That was a big problem. And now, he's looking at maybe losing this game. I mean, to be fair, he was even if he scored early, right? Like, you know, if you score in three or four turns, there's a good chance you get scored back on and lose anyway. But, like, you know, it's, it's really tough. Like, it's so tough having to win. I mean, there was a there was a reason I was so stressed out in my round three game. Mm, not really, K Fog. Come on, you know that's disingenuous, K Fog. He's got re rolls. It's substantially better once you add re rolls to the equation. Especially multiple rerolls. So yes, if you, if you are if you are not committing rerolls, two rushes is about thirty percent, and a three plus is thirty three percent. But once you add rushes, uh, well, sorry, once you add rerolls, then your three plus dodge is eighty nine percent, but your two rushes are like ninety four percent, aren't they, and become much better and also <laughs> no 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 five percent more like five percent and uh, but also like it halves the amount of fails doesn't it like it halves the amount of fails that's pretty big, being half as likely to fail is pretty big. Isn't it? Ninety four point five ninety four point five two two. Come on, core. Got two re-rolls now. You've got two re-rolls now. We're living in Blood Bowl 20. Four years. Catch up. Catch up, K-Fog. Catch up. <laughs> you and your tabletop is living in the past. I've caught up. I've played Blood Bowl 3 for like, you know, <laughs> about 10 games. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure I would either. But it's interesting, though, isn't it? It is interesting. It, it's how much does failure cripple you and stuff as well. There's a lot to think. Like that's what I mean. Like that's why I mean it's tricky, right? It's tricky because it's a calculation of failure state, success state, how many rerolls you want to put in. There's a lot to there's a lot to think about when you make a same a seemingly. Um, a seemingly kind of easy choice. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So Alan has to win, so the onus is on him to score first. So, you know, that by default, your opponent needing to win makes you a big favourite anyway, right? Like, Dion Lord becomes a big favourite because now Alan basically has to play badly, essentially, um, to try and get the win. Because scoring early is playing badly because it increases your chance of a loss, right? Nope, dead, dead, dead. Uh, Alan is the blue ones, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, like that. That's the way. Like if you look at a random blood ball match, and this is stats completely pulled from thin air. If you would imagine two, this, I mean, they aren't equal teams, they're not equal coaches, but let's say they were in imaginary land, then you could, whoop, you're putting a reroll there, 
you could estimate 30% win, 40% draw, 30% loss, right, for either person. If you're the one who has to win, you do everything you can to up that win rate, which is massively... In, it's increasing your loss rate more than it's increasing your win rate, right? That's the problem. You, you've got to go for, like, you've got to try and push that to, say, 35, 65 with 0% of a draw. But whatever you're adding in win, you're, you're adding more loss, almost certainly. Yeah, not go for the guard dodge. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 No, I mean, I agree. I would definitely go as, as absolutely as... I mean, I tend to go as conservative as possible anyway, but... Yeah, especially so in this case, yeah. Hello, Truk. Thank you very much. Oh. And you too, yeah. <laughs> oh. That was the most stressful game of Blood Bowl I've ever had, honestly. Oh. Sure hands fails the pickup. So now, that was a long turn from Dion Lord, and I'll be honest, I, I lost interest in it. <laughs> there is, there's two ghouls that maybe he can do something to get them involved and get the ball. I mean, he could just go for a 4-3. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. So you could just go for a four, three, four, three, two, two, score. You know, worst comes to worst, he's got that on straight away. <laughs> Thanks, Cosmigo. I mean, I, you know, it, I thought it was interesting talking about the, you know, the assessing the equity, winning, drawing, pushing for the win. I thought that was all interesting. Whereas on the pitch, you know, it was just Dion Lord punching things, maximizing two dice blocks, play as safe as possible. And, you know, I think that was exactly what he should have done. <laughs> um... I mean, the thing is, J5, yes, there's 8,000 euros on the line for this tournament, so you can certainly say that. Oh, Kaz, Kaz, dead, dead, dead. That's a really nice cars. <laughs> oh dear. Do you know what? Help me, I hate that you're right. <laughs> Here we go. This is a nice solve, actually. I quite like this solve from uh, Alan. Oh, he followed! No, he followed! Oh, he's gonna go. He's gonna dodge the other ghoul out. Okay, yeah. He's gonna dodge the ghoul out. So I would have thought just, you know, go in with the with him himself, right, and use your rerolls, because then again you you minimize the risk of failure. This is an eighty nine percent fail. The two rushes were was a uh, sorry, eighty nine success, the two rushes were ninety four success. So his route was slightly less likely to work, but it keeps his rerolls act rerolls active for the turnover to go two nil up. So you can definitely, argue, you know, you've got a good argument that the slightly riskier, uh, higher payoff route is better. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, you're right, Cole. Yeah, you're right. Well, look. 
Yeah, I mean, you should just split with him. Yeah. Yeah. It worked. I didn't see the ghoul when he made the white when he made the white blitz. I literally didn't even see that ghoul. But yes, once you see the uh, once you see the ghoul, <laughs> then he absolutely should have blitzed with a ghoul a million percent. Because then, so he, he actually made an additional dodge with a white, which could have been a rush with the ghoul, right? So that's I guess. So I guess it. No, there was no scat. There was there. No, no. It was just. It was absolutely. He made a dodge instead of a rush. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you, Dimmy. Yeah. Dimmy with the right answer. Good one. Good one, Dim. Ah, uh, you did the opposite. You didn't even because the blitz and all there was a girl. I didn't know that there was a girl. Still, I was still laughing out memes copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I was just, I was just, I was just reading Elp and J fives. I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna copy paste them both now anyway. Um, and just thinking, yeah, you know what? I was having an ex existential crisis and not really looking at the board as well as I could have been. But um, <laughs> yeah. Yes, he might have missed the ghoul before he made the block. Yeah, you never know, yeah. Very deep, isn't he? But yeah, I mean, so, so this turn five score is like bad, right? It sets you up to lose, but at least it gives you more of a chance to win than scoring on turn eight does. So he had to do it, knowing what he needs from the match. He needs to win. And when I say he needs to win, I don't mean deep in his soul, J5. I mean to qualify for the round of 32. Which, you know, that is, that is you know, why you're playing the game, right? So when I say needs, I don't mean needs as validation for his life. <laughs> oh, yeah, only 10 players. He was up a player. Now it's 10v10. You never know, that, that could be the case, J5. Oh, triple skull! You probably have to re-roll that because the only thing that's really bad is if you get turned over. So you have to probably, you probably have to do that. And re oh my God, he could have maybe had to re-roll that as well. Really got himself in a bit of a pickle here. Maybe he should have just blocked with block, right? Because he's got mighty blow on it. Maybe he should just blocked with block and then, uh, you know, made some safe moves to cover against the, a turnover, but he's not really caring about failure state too much here. He needs to win if he wants to qualify at the round of 32. I mean, come on. I, I wasn't saying that he needs to do it. Come on. Come on, people. Be serious. Absolute trolls. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, okay, fuck. <laughs> I mean, I know you don't expect to, Cosmigo, I know you didn't expect it, but look, he had a block, he had a block player. The block player could have blitzed, kicked him out over here, moved a player up there, had a really strong line and then go for the pickup, right? Like the only way you lose is is like an absolute critical failure. Um, 
Just play safe. Just play mega mega safe. Oh, there's a Kaz. And conversely, you know, Alan has to play a bit wilder, doesn't he? He's really got to, uh, he's got to push his luck and make things happen. <laughs> but he's not, but he has to. <laughs> I mean, he has to, but he's, but he's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, only two ghouls makes it really hard, right? If you had four ghouls, you could have sent a couple of ghouls into the uh, Dion Lord's half. But he hasn't. I mean, I don't think anybody thinks of Blood Bowl as a sport, do they? Um, funnily enough, the only kind of really esports element of Blood Bowl 3 is not misclicking, isn't it? And yet people kind of discount misclicking as a thing and they're like, oh, well, I didn't make a Blood Bowl mistake, I just misclicked. Whereas, like, you know, if you look at Call of Duty and stuff, making the correct clicks is like 99% of the game, isn't it? <laughs> it's very hard! <laughs> That's nearly all every other game is, is just click the right buttons at the right time. <laughs> oh god help <laughs> try to click the right things that would be Fog's montage just wrestling with a client just clicking <laughs> hundreds of times <laughs> doing the yak cam to make sure he doesn't miss somebody behind the mummies you know things like that Yeah, indeed, Lepeg. Yeah, he could have. He could have made a wrestle one day and then a double rush to have scored on turn two, which, you know, obviously normally I'd hate that. Or turn three, I think. Well, yeah, turn three, I think it was. So while normally I'd hate that, um, I feel that would have been completely justified in this situation. It's turn seven. He could get this guy forward, right? Or, or this guy, I guess, is justifiable. No, he's based. Oh my god, he's cast a mummy. He doesn't regen. Boy, howdy. Even unluckier than the ghoul not regening, the mummy doesn't regen. Flip me, guys. This might get him the win anyway. Kazi a mummy is pretty massive in this matchup. Monumental, you might say. Oh, Yak and Art's to enemies. I mean, I guess they would be if Yak was still around, but uh, Yak isn't. He's out of Blood Bowl now. I think he was. Uh, I think he's, you know, got disenfranchised with Blood Bowl 3. Bullied off the scene. One too many graphs. <laughs> <laughs> One too many grabs <laughs> made Yak a sad boy. Disenchanted. <laughs> I don't even know what disenfranchised means. <laughs>
the, deprived of the right to vote. No, disenchanted. <laughs> I know what disenchanted means. <laughs> <laughs> oh so here we go can he get into scoring range turn 7 yes he puts the guard in blitz of a mighty blow and then gets in scoring range and if he makes he'll have a sideline cage on him he makes a dodge, he'll have a full sideline cage. I don't know why this guy was here and not there. But he wasn't. Yeah, he had to defend the sideline there. He still needs a dodge though, right? He still needs a dodge here. Or maybe he doesn't. Maybe he puts the ghoul there. And this ghoul... Oh, but that's a rush. So he's at least got to make one rush. Maybe two rushes. So maybe he puts this ghoul there. And this ghoul double rushes. And then this ghoul dodges. So this is some dice rolls. He's only got one reroll. This is some dice rolls here. Or he could just do the one. The, oh, he, he started with this roll. He started with a dodge. Makes the dodge. And now he could just do one rush, right? He can do the one at a time. Maybe he doesn't even need. Does he need to rush there? Maybe not, right? Maybe he doesn't even need to make one rush. He doesn't make one. He doesn't, he doesn't need to make the second, does he? He definitely doesn't need to make the second. And then he won in nines. Perfect timing. Well, Alan can pile in a bit here. But whether it'll be enough, there'll probably be something on to unlock it. Couple of sixes and he'll be right in. Maybe that's the play. Maybe Alt Meme's right. Honestly, um, <laughs> he could like put the guard in, block this guy to there, and then he could have the dodge in for the surf. Right? Dodge in for the surf isn't too terrible. It might be better than whatever else he's going to do. Not even uphill, right? He's got he's got guard of his own. He just put his guard in so he can one d, and then uphill, and then one d for the surf. Six plus for this, like six plus for this, thirty percent. That's pretty good, isn't it? Like it's more probably percent than you know. The onlord's probably going to be more than seventy percent to score this turn, isn't he? Like at the end of the day. At the end of the day, Dionlo is probably going to be more than more than thirty percent of score this turn. More than seventy percent of score. So, you might as well take your thirty percent on your turn, because if you don't, he's going to score like ninety percent or whatever. I would have liked to have blitzed with the guard. And then have the guard on the ball, right, so to make it a bit harder to deal with. I would, I would have probably blitzed this school with a guard. And then maybe he's put the guard there. Scott's Dynamath from Jim. No, no, right? If, if you, like, if Dion Lord's higher than 70% to score this turn, you should try the 6 plus dodge because that makes you about 30%, right? Better players a 5 plus dodge to 2d chain push serve via the rookie goal. I 
Okay, I can't understand that. Well, we roll this, he's got nothing else to do. Two re rolls in the bank for Allen, you know, probably should have made some rushes last turn to shore up the sideline and still cover the centre switch. Honestly, I, I cannot, I cannot follow that Cheek and, and K Fog with what's happening. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I get it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that would have been good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the play. Yep. I get it now, Chigan and Kfog, well done. The rookie ghoul, yeah. Well, it was Chigan, wasn't it? Chigan said it, and then... And then Kfog explained it as well. I get it, yeah. So you, you block this guy, and that puts him there. There was a rookie ghoul there, so you block him to there. And then you can dodge in here. That's a six plus dodge, unless you've powered him, I guess. So it's still a six plus dodge. And then and then you blitz him and chain him out. But it might be a five plus. It might be a five plus dodge. Oh, there's his reroll. And he fails! And he knocks out! Oh my goodness. Successful defense for Alan. So what did he have to do there? I think this was probably an irrelevant one, right? This might have been relevant. It was a 2D and then it was a dodge with dodge and two rushes. So that was pretty high odds, wasn't it, of success? A dodge and two rushes. Oh god, the turn timer. It was an uphill 2D, oh wow. So actually, that wasn't, uh, oh, let's, let's see what kind of percentage he was. That may have been the passive player might have been the best. Uphill needing anything but a skull, right? <sighs> you won't believe this, saying about 70%. It was 70.254 to score that. That turn. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, isn't it? And the success of the dodging, the 6 plus dodging was 30.556. So basically the dodging was basically better, right? Because you can re-roll it and do other things as well. No, no, the whole sequence, Kfog. The whole sequence. That was the minus 2D, the dodge 3 plus with dodge and two rushes. The whole sequence is 70.254. But yeah, an uphill. An uphill. With block is about 30% fail, isn't it? Because it's a... Uh, you know, it's better than a dodge. Dion Lord, I can tell you, 
need needed a result on these KOs in this region. Three, six, seven, eight players. He does need a result. Diomelord needs to draw. If Diomelord gets a draw, he qualifies. If Allen gets and obviously if Dion Lord wins he qualifies. But if he gets a draw he qualifies. If he if Dion Lord loses, then Allen takes his spot. So it's very spicy. Yeah, that's huge. Failed KO on this school. Um failed region on the mummy. Dead ghoul as well. That ghoul didn't regen. <laughs> because it can't, is the joke. wasn't a failed regen. The, the ghoul didn't regen. You, you can't say it failed regen. It doesn't actually fail the regen, does it? You can't ever say that the ghoul fails regen. But what you can do is you can say the ghoul didn't regen. <laughs> and then, then you're not even being incorrect. This is looking really rough for Dion Lord now, isn't it? It's two ghouls versus two ghouls. It's two mummies versus one. And it's like, how many players? Eight players? Yeah, eight players versus 11. Three player advantage for Allen. And he has to get the win. So he's got a bit of time. He doesn't have to go like mega aggressive, right? He doesn't have to. I feel like, you know, maybe most of us would go pretty aggressive here, but he doesn't have to yet. Yeah, but he just needs to stop him, yeah. That's the thing. He, do he just needs to stop him. He doesn't have to turn over the Lord. He just has to stop him. This is the thing, right, about doing the, if he'd done the defense first, right, like, if, he, if he'd done the defense first, he could have just tried to stop him, then he wouldn't have had to score early. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I do feel like kicking is advantageous when you have to win and they don't. I mean, now it's just like the Ben don't break defense, isn't it? You know, he's he just got like he's got three players up. He just has to uh, don't let this slip, as Stevie G would say. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> I've got nothing against Liverpool at all, but uh, I just think it's a. Uh, a funny moment, isn't it, in in football and sports history that like one of the most legendary English players of all time and just did that. I mean I'd be swamping these six guys now, right? You've got eleven versus six. And then somehow he got a two dice block and KO'd someone. I would have just piled in all of my guard, all my players, and just, you know, tried to stop him making a two dice block. But uh, Alan was a bit more conservative than that, and now it's only 10 versus 8. I'd have definitely just swamped the line. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have pushed anything through because I've just gone, right, you've got six players, I've got 11, let's have a big fight, 11 versus six, and then as you completely annihilate him in this fight, all of a sudden he's got two free players and there's 11 dudes staring at him, and he's like, oh shit. <laughs> Oh yeah, if you, if you need a draw, then yeah, absolutely, just, just receive first and score, right, and turn eight. If you just need a draw, I think... <laughs> I 
If you see a lovely field with a family having a picnic, and there's a nice pond in it, you fill in the pond with concrete, you plow the family into the field, you blow up the tree, and use the leaves to make a dress for your wife who's also your brother. <laughs> Thanks very much, Goliath. A classical... Uh... He just... Did he just blitz with a skeleton? He just blitzed with a skeleton. Um, thank you very much, Goliath. What an absolute legend. Thank you. Well. He's got a steep skeleton threat on the ball. Whoa. Like, he doesn't need to threaten the ball, right? Like, it's better for him, really, if he doesn't threaten the ball. Because he's 1-0 up. So I, I don't even like threatening the ball here. Just dominate the LOS. Smash him to bits. And then there's nowhere for those two ghouls. Those two ghouls have to go forward at some point. So why let them get past somebody, right? So I'd have definitely just focused on a big focus on banging here. Though now it's only 10 versus 6. And this mummy is uh, hitting things with mighty blow. Though maybe nothing else is now. <laughs> to be fair. Like, I'm not saying it's easy to lock it down, you know, or he's done any, like, appalling misplays in locking it down, but I feel like you don't need this guy forward, right? I'd say it's probably wrong to have him forward. Plus he's a skeleton, and hence armor 8+. plus. Wasn't stunned because of it, but could have been. <laughs> Hello, Trick. So, Diom Lord needs a draw. They're both on three points. And, um, Alan needs a win. Anything except an Alan win means Diom Lord qualifies. So it is absolutely a critical match. And that was a real good turn for Dion Lord. Two stuns. Got away from both mummies. No, he got away from one mummy. Just makes this a two dice instead of a three. Doesn't get the follow-up hit. I don't know what this mummy's doing. Like, what this mummy's doing. Not not what this mummy's doing, like what this mummy's doing if he wants to blitz the other mummy or blitz this ghoul or what. So I, can, I can show you the table. So yeah, Niagara's won the group. And it's just whether Dion Lord or Alan can join him. Oh wait, that was that was that was the opponent zombie. Oh my god, I just couldn't even tell who was. I couldn't even tell he was an opposing zombie. That's even with red and blue on. I just couldn't tell they were on. I'm terrible. Look, this is without red and blue. Now it's really hard to tell who's on which side. So we have to have it on red and blue. And I still didn't even realise he was a zombie next to him. Flip me. I thought that was his zombie. This strip baller should have been free, right? I feel like he should have kept... 
both of these guys free and everything else should have been in making blocks and stuff. Like you shouldn't be having to make a one dice blitz when you've got 10 players fighting 6. Not even fighting 6, he's like fighting 5 and he's got 2 mummies as well. And he still doesn't have a 2D here. Gets a 1D on the mummy, he gets a pal, that's huge. Has to not follow, right? So he's got, no, he has to not follow, so he's got the strip ball of three. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe the circles. Yeah, maybe it was the circles. Yeah. Yeah, it was probably easy. It probably easy to tell them without the extra circles. Yeah. But then it's hard to tell where the whites are and stuff without those extra circles. But yeah, it's a lot easier to tell who's on which team here, isn't it, actually? Oh, dub skulls. Ooh, three out of four skulls. <laughs> yeah, okay, fuck. I mean, to be fair, undead shouldn't be too much of a trouble for uh, Woodies, right? I feel like undead are a pretty decent matchup for Woodies. Yeah, no, I don't like I don't like the way Alan has played this, but <laughs> one that has two goods and skeletons, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, if you're in the round of thirty two, especially, you know, if you've got a chance to be one of the group, um, I think you'd rather be facing Alan than the Lord. Yes, I I do think that. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I do, that's not an insult, um, it, yeah, it's just, just is what it is, yes, of course, I'd rather be facing the team with two ghouls and skeletons. No, and he fails the dodge. So, this could be a very swift... 2D on the ball. But maybe not. Yeah. And he's only a push, but he's got both ghouls. I mean, the problem is now, if he goes in the back, if he doesn't get the knockdown, he's in a bad situation, isn't he? But he pretty much has to go in the back here. Another Kaz. The kind of annoying thing is, <laughs> he's got a wrestler there. I guess you can rush, right? You can rush with the the skeleton rush is the player, right? And then the wrestler blitzes up and then the blocker recovers. This is the player. It sucks that you've got a rush, but that's got to be the player. And then the fact he's a zombie actually helps you. That, sorry, the fact is a skeleton actually helps you here. Yeah, it is a skeleton, so it's only one rush. And he makes it. So yeah, this is quite nice, isn't it? Pushing him up, and then you've still got like a, a ghoul and a... Oh, okay, no, you can hit that way. Gets the wrestle. The skeleton catches it. No, he didn't. Oh my god, look at the scatter. I 
mean, you have to re-roll this. You just have to. You literally have to. He's got it. And... He can still catch you. I guess you could come back. I don't know where you go, actually. You have to not stand there so he can't pierce you. <laughs> he had to be one to the left. He absolutely had to be one to the left. He can get two dice on him now. He can tag, he can tag the mighty blow at least. Wow. Wow, wow, yeah, that angle, that angle was... So the reason for it being a bad angle was, if you push, he's further away, you know, to clear. He's got three players in basin with one. I guess he could put the stripper in front, but like... And the the if also if you power him, then it could go. One of these could catch it, or it would be you know in one or two tackle zones. Whereas if you blitz up here, it could you know it could come out here, and it'd just be almost so much better if he were to go there. It was so much better here from that angle. Um, he didn't foul it, and he stood in the wrong square. He definitely should have stood here. And so now we've got a double rush to two dice the ball. Yes, I would have also thought about the double rush as well. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I would have just stood in the right square first. Gets the power. Like, he absolutely had to be standing in this column. He had to be standing in that column. He shouldn't have given it at all. <laughs> you know? Oh wow, gets the uphill on the mummy. Oh, it was the zombie that hit. <laughs> Removes himself. <laughs> Removed. I mean, this is... Awful for Dion Lord, isn't it? He, he went into this only needing a draw as well. And he's just got mega banged out. And, uh, yeah, this has happened. Gets the full pow, which frees the strip ball. Another removal. <laughs> He's got, what, five players left on the pitch now, Dion Lord. Absolute ridiculous. Do you just stand up the ghoul here? Probably, right? Just stand him up. Oh, wow. Makes this block. And one in... One in 80 ones. <laughs> Didn't just stand up this ghoul. So now there's a three plus out to get another ghoul back. But then he actually can't do that, right? Because he has to score. The onwards one nil down. So what's this? It's a 1D from him. A 2D from him. And then... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Rush handoff. Potato. Oh, wow. Wow. All he had to do was stand up that ghoul and didn't. He could have also stood up this ghoul as well, by the way, and not even done anything with him. But um, it was fair enough that he wanted to, you know, like, dodge away, blitz him, and then pick it up. But he had to stand up that ghoul before this block. Oh yeah, just blitz with him, yeah, okay, then it's a 2D, and then he's got this, can this guy reach 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's a rush, but it means that it, this was a 2D instead of a 1D. Oh 
Oh man. So it's a 3-2-3 three, three to basically win. <laughs> With a re-roll. I mean, unlucky, right? 1 in 81 chance, but like... With this stuff, like you just had to stand him up to make it safe. No, oh, he's rolled a one. Makes the re-roll. Oh, he fills the catch. It goes back to him. <laughs> wow. The stripper's stunned. The only one has like zero players. Flip me. He can still score with anything, but he would have been he would have been gone, wouldn't he, if he'd made the handoff. Problem is he's at least getting one die split, isn't he? Guaranteed with Wrestle. Base band at WrestleGoo, yeah. I mean, that should have been stood, really, but, yeah. Wow. Okay, what will Alan do? Is the question. I like succeeding the hand over there, yeah. One square up, yeah. I might have just moved him, like... Yeah, yeah, one up, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean... Who knows? You kind of got to get the power here. Don't know why he's moving in all these players. Foul the wrestle ghoul, yeah. Yeah, that was probably the play. Okay, I guess this zombie's gonna come around in front. But that's all he has in front. Wait, he hasn't based this guy! Oh, the mummy's gonna rush. The mummy's gonna rush to base him. Okay, that that's better actually than rushing with a goo. And he gets the full pow. Ball not in the crowd. Wow. Wow, what a game. Four players left. And he still somehow had a chance to on Lord. Yep, the goo should have been fouled. Yep. Yep, one up and fouling was the play. Wow. <laughs> wow. Not one up and fouling, like one up from where he ended the, the turn, like not one up where Chiegan wanted to go, just fouling from this where he was stood in. Yeah, it's been it's been a thriller, hasn't it, Keith? <laughs> That's true, Cosmigo, that is true. <laughs> but it's been a hell of a game. No rerolls now for Dion Lord, so this is pretty grim. Yeah, the snake, yeah. Yeah. 97% of the time. Well, no, the whole score was 70%. 
you can't just uh, put it on the 97% like another you know, 3% fail the whole score was 70% yeah I guess you just dodge with the uh, dodge with the white then lob it oh no the ghoul nah, they're both a 6 anyway aren't they whoever does it is 4-3 with dodge better than 3 without I don't even know. Frantically sambering now, Dion Lord. <laughs> Makes the dodge, fails the pickup. And that surely, surely, but there's no rerolls, there's no rerolls for Alan. So, <laughs> that's maybe not, every, that's maybe not all over. You'd think it's all over. But this guy did not base the ball. He could have just based the ball. Didn't base the ball with him. Ah, right, so he is at least tagging the ghoul there. Double tag the ghoul. Didn't block. Is he going to blitz the scoring threat? And 3D him. He only gets to serve one of them though, doesn't he? Unfortunately. Um, this no, he's he's British. Okay, so the ghoul does not pick it up. So I mean, it's ludicrous dice, but it's possible, right? I guess a 1D to make the dodge and pick up easier, dodge, pick up, pass, score, is probably all you do here. Yes, help me, yep, incredible. Incredible game. I mean, this certainly helped, didn't it? Um, he's only got four players left on the pitch here. Didn't really do much back. I feel like the group winners will have had a, uh, a clear preference here. No offence. Goes for the scatter play. Interesting. That's surely bad. Unless he's just thinking one in eight, it scatters onto the white. That seemed like that couldn't be a good thing. Well, only good one in eight. I mean, it's so low odds anyway. Maybe that was. Maybe that was okay. So now six, 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 five. And score. No. You be my wingman anytime. Knocked himself out. Bullshit. And that is the win for Allen76. Unbelievable. Uh, thank you for the raid, Sage. Unbelievable. Sage back in Blood Bowl. And, uh, yep, this what a game, Dion Lord. Unbelievably, only needed a draw from this game and has had his team smashed to pieces. Absolute comedy mega dicing. And uh, somehow, Allen76 has won the game and has made the round of 32. So there you go. Congratulations, Allen. Unbelievable. He can pitch clear, yeah.
He could actually try and score a second, and then he's got better tiebreakers. He might win the group. Might he win the group? I'm not sure. Okay, well he fails. <laughs> he did exactly the same thing! Tried to hand it off to the Goulin, and the white kept it. <laughs> exactly the same thing. So... Yeah, honestly, right? If he'd got the second... No, 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 because he's touched it. Yeah, so if he'd got the second touchdown, he would have had 3-4 and 2 against. And then if Niaga lost 3-0, um, Allen could have actually topped the group. But now he, he's only won 1-0, so he's only got two touchdowns, so that is confirmed. Niaga has won the group. Allen, 76, is in second place. And shockingly, Dion Lord has been eliminated from the group stage. So there you go. Unbelievable. Congratulations. Massive congratulations to Alan76. Commiserations to Dion Lord. And uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.